Sarah Simonelli. You might recognize me from such films as The Operating Rooms of Tomorrow and your class Surgical Procedures 3. As you all know, electricity is one of the greatest necessities in the operating room today. From lighting to equipment, it's part of everyday surgery. But with great power comes great responsibility, which is why I've brought you here today, electrical safety in the OR. We've come a very long way since the discovery of electricity. We have gone so far as to even have electronic medical devices be federally regulated. In 1967, the Association for the Advancement of Medical Instrumentation was founded, or the AAMI. And through them in conjunction with the Joint Commission, there have been set standards for how we manufacture, test, market, and even use our medically electronic devices. But even with all this help, it is up to you, the healthcare worker, to ensure that we have properly working equipment before, during, and after each and every surgery. The most basic of electrical safety is making sure that all the equipment is safe to use beforehand. Surgical technicians should check for frayed wires and cables as well as loose hand pieces and buttons, anywhere that electricity can escape from. Never let equipment roll over wires and cables as it will cause them to be worn down over time and be exposed. The next very important part is grounding. Grounding systems are designed to discharge any harmful currents that go directly through the patient. The most common example of the grounding system is the three-prong plug. It is emphasized that the third prong should never be removed. If it is done, grounding protection will not be provided. The electrosurgical unit, or ESU, is probably the most common electrical to medical device used in surgery today. For the ESU to complete a circuit, a grounding pad is placed on the patient to create a pathway back to the source. A grounding pad should be placed to the buttocks or upper thigh and must be placed firmly to the patient. If not, the patient could suffer from electrical burns in that area. Patients should, of course, also refrain from wearing any jewelry while in surgery, as these items will cause burns in those areas while an ESU is in use. Static electricity is another worry we have in the operating room. It is something that most people would not think is a problem in surgery, but static can be a source of ignition when in the presence of oxygen and anesthetic gases. To ensure that a static does not occur, we make sure that the operating room has a humidity level higher than 45%. Anything lower in conditions will be dry enough for spontaneous flame. Another easy way to prevent static electricity is to drape it and leave it. Once an area is draped for surgery, they should be left alone. This is done not only to protect the sterility of the drape, but the unnecessary rubbing together of drapes can also start a fire. Once draped, an alcohol-based prep solution should be allowed to dry completely and never be allowed to pool under drapes, as it can be flammable. If possible, always use prep solution that is alcohol-free. Finally, after surgery is complete, to ensure that your electronic medical devices will be in working order for the next surgery, make sure that you disassemble them correctly and unplug them by the plug and not by pulling on the wire, as it will lose its integrity and expose live wires. If we can follow these measures before, during, and after surgery while using electricity, we can prevent any and all injury to the patient.